Well, we are taking another look outside over downtown Tallahassee, where the night is rounding out a pretty calm night out there. Meteorologist Alexa Trishler has your first to know forecast. Alexa, it's a chilly one, though. That's right. Bitterly cold temperatures. It is sharply colder right now than we've seen in quite a few days. Now that's something we have to get used to for a very short amount of time because there is a warm up on the way through this week. We'll take a look at current temperatures across South Georgia and the Big Bend, where it's already 39 degrees in Bainbridge and Tallahassee, 36 in Valdosta, 41 in Thomasville and Moultrie. Those temperatures will continue to plunge. Fortunately, wind speeds have calmed down a bit. They're mostly out of the northwest and they should stay light through the overnight hours. So the wind chill is a factor in Bainbridge. It feels like 34 degrees. It feels like 37 in Thomasville and Tallahassee. So not that sharp of a wind chill, but still present with us. There is a freeze warning in effect for our eastern most counties during the overnight and early Monday morning hours. That's in effect until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning for Clinch and Eccles, Hamilton and Swanee counties along I-75. Low temperatures will likely dip below the freezing mark across our immediate area. We'll talk about this warm up on the way and when the next chance for rain does arrive coming up in just a few minutes. And with those low temperatures, the Kearney Center is opening their doors for a cold night shelter. Now tomorrow night, if you need a place, intake will begin at 6 p.m. at 2650 Municipal Way. If needed, overflow sheltering will be provided by community partner sites to shelter overnight and leave the following morning. All overnight shelters will operate under CDC guidance. Well, this Valentine's Day, the chocolate covered strawberries are going to be sweeter than ever. That's because one restaurant is using them to benefit NAMI. Max has raised $1,000 for the organization dedicated to advocating for families and friends of people with mental illness. That money, all from selling chocolate covered strawberries. So that's something close to me and, you know, my family and friends that uh, we kind of, something that we deal with and, and burdens our family is mental illness and um, we're very familiar with, um, so not too many people understand mental illness and oftentimes people that suffer from mental illness are discarded members of society and sort of don't have outreach and help. So. The restaurant put together about 60 dozen orders of the chocolate covered strawberries for this Valentine's Day season. And for the second time in franchise history and the first since moving to Los Angeles, the Rams are on top of the NFL world. It was a wild game to watch. Now, winning that big game over Cincinnati, 23-20. to 20. Sports anchor Dom Tibbetts joins us now because we've got some Knowles that are getting some pretty big rings tonight. Well, Jada, as Drake once said, they've got some really big rings. Former Florida State Seminoles Jalen Ramsey and Cam Akers are world champions. Alongside them, you also have Florida Gator grads Van Jefferson and Brandon Powell. Then, of course, Georgia Bulldogs alum Matthew Stafford, the quarterback of tonight's performance, and Sony Michelle, all celebrating an amazing accomplishment tonight. Cooper Cup wins the game's MVP, a perfect way to cap off a remarkable season. And here's something crazy, Jada. So Van Jefferson, receiver for the Rams, Florida grad, as I mentioned, wins a big game. And you think he's going to go and celebrate, right? Nah. Wrong. His wife, Samaria, went into labor midway through the game, so he's on his way to the hospital right now to welcome in his second child to their family. What a crazy way to end off a remarkable That's night. That's a great celebration to me. He, I mean, this is a day of winning for him. Does uh, it get better than this? Well, imagine now his son is going to say, hey, my birthday, I was born the day my dad won a Super Bowl. Right. doesn't get much better than that. Talk about inheriting that ring as well. Like, he's going to have a story, birthday present, like... <sighs> I didn't even that's, think about that. That's, that's right. Amazing. That, is. that is cool. So well, cool. Congratulations to both of them. Really good to see it. Well, still ahead tonight, new developments from the January 6th committee. The big names now expected to cooperate after the break. But first, international officials are expecting an invasion sooner than later as Russia and the Ukraine continue to feud. Diplomatic efforts to prevent a Russian invasion of Ukraine have continued throughout the weekend. After an hour-long call with Russian President, President Vladimir Putin on Saturday, today President Biden spoke with Ukrainian President Zelensky. Here's ABC's Andrew Dimbert. President Joe Biden seeking to reassure Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky in a phone call on Sunday, telling him the United States and its allies will respond swiftly and decisively if Russia invades Ukraine. 
as Russia carries out military drills along Ukraine's border and its Navy conducts war games in the Black Sea, diplomatic efforts continue. President Biden holding a high-stakes call with Russian President Vladimir Putin on Saturday, warning a Russian attack would result in swift and severe costs. French President Emmanuel Macron also speaking with the Russian leader. Putin denying during their conversation that Russian forces intend to invade Ukraine. And German Chancellor Scholz is heading to Kiev on Monday, then to Moscow. U.S. officials say in just the last 10 days, Russia accelerated the buildup of its forces, moving closer to Ukraine's border. Putin now has an estimated 130,000 troops amassed on three sides of the country, and the West believes it could launch an assault very rapidly. Pentagon spokesman John Kirby telling Fox News. We, we have uh, good sources of intelligence, and they're telling us that, uh, you know, that things are sort of building now to some sort of crescendo opportunity for Mr. Putin. Senator Lindsey Graham calling for the passage of the mother of all sanctions bill being debated in Congress to deter Putin from invading Ukraine. The best thing that can happen is for us to pass a sanctions package pre-invasion with a waiver, post-invasion sanctions that would destroy the ruble and uh, cripple the Russian economy so Putin could see it in writing. That might help him decide not to invade. The U.S. State Department ordering all non-essential embassy personnel in Kiev to leave immediately. Canada closing its embassy and Australia joining a growing list of countries urging their citizens to leave. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. The January 6th committee is optimistic that Rudy Giuliani will, quote, fully cooperate with their subpoena. The New York Times is reporting that Giuliani's lawyer is signaling that he plans to take a less confrontational stance to their investigation. Once acting as President Trump's attorney, Giuliani previously declined to cooperate over issues of executive privilege. Now Giuliani is reportedly expressing a willingness to openly engage with the committee. By cooperating, Giuliani could avoid a costly legal fight and might also be less likely to face a criminal contempt of Congress charge. Definitely chilly outside. I just ran to the car maybe about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Alexa, what can we expect going into our Valentine's Day? Uh, sub freezing temperatures to start the day on your Valentine's Day Monday. So hopefully you have a pet to cuddle up with or someone to cuddle up with because it's going to be frigid. Sharply colder air is with us right now. It's already dropped to the 30s for some of us, but we do have a warm up this week and that will arrive especially as we go into Wednesday. We're talking 70 degrees making a return. Plenty of dry air has moved in from the northwest, so bone dry air, really cold temperatures, clear skies. It is a little breezy still, but we're expecting nothing by way of rain, obviously tonight or for the next several days, but the conditions are just right to set up for a really just bitingly cold start to the day. Winds should calm down overnight. There might be a light wind to start the day tomorrow, giving us a bit of a wind chill when you head off to work and school. So make sure you layer up and grab all the winter gear. Because temperatures might feel like the low to mid 20s, depending on how low we go for our morning low temperatures. So just get ready for that. But going through the morning hours, temperatures will start to rise swiftly going into the afternoon. Once we get deal with these 20s, yeah, that means a lot of us will be dropping to the mid to upper 20s. A lot of us will be below freezing early tomorrow morning. Afternoon, though, much better. Low 60s, upper 50s for South Georgia. That's a great day with mostly sunny skies, no cloud cover. And finally, low wind speeds will be with us all day long. Clear skies all day for your Valentine's Day into the night. That will allow for another cold Monday night, Tuesday morning setup where we'll see temperatures in the low 30s, waking up to patchy frost Tuesday morning, more sunshine and dry weather Tuesday and Wednesday. The slow warm up begins Tuesday, Wednesday. That's when we'll be in the mid to upper 70s. Thursday should stay dry. Also will be warm. A big warm up with southerly winds, a lot of moisture moving in by the middle and later part of this week. That's great, but then there's a cold front that sweeps through sometime late Thursday into Friday, which does prompt some showers and possibly some stronger storms. 
late Thursday into early Friday. Timing isn't exact just yet. We still have to work out those fine details, but we could see some gustier winds with those storms. There's still some model differences on what happens after that. We could see some showers potentially lingering into Saturday too, followed by much colder air for next week. And so we get busy later this week. The next three days though, just fine. Wonderful. That warm up can't beat it. 66 for a high Tuesday, 76 for a high Wednesday. That's great. Mornings won't be as cold either. Staying warm and dry for the first part of Thursday, tracking those showers and storms though later lasting into Friday. And then of course next weekend slapped with colder air once again, but hopefully will be dry late next weekend. This weekend, not the best for Florida State basketball. The women falling on the road against rival Miami this afternoon, 76 to 59. The loss drops FSU to 12 and 11 overall and 6 and 7 in ACC play. After the game, head coach Sue Semrau shared her thoughts on the team's inability to close the gap late in this game. You know, we did try to make some adjustments. Uh, you know, we just, I think that once they gained the lead, like they did, uh, you know, a big lead, it was just, it, we get a couple stops and then, you know, they hit a pick and pop three and, and then the win.